Yes, Heavenly Father. Lord, you're amazing. You're so good. You are so righteous. You're so amazing. You you do things that make things easy in our lives. When we follow you, when we trust in you. And I want to thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for showing up this morning. Thank you for directing us. Thank you for directing this message and this service and the music. And Lord, thank you for directing our emotions this morning. Now, Lord, I pray that you would speak, that our ears would be turned on for you, that our hearts would be open for more of you. Lord, that we who say we are free would really be free this morning. That no matter what's going on outside of church, Lord, I pray right now that you would take all of our burdens, all of our, our cares, all of our worries, all of everything that we could ever think about right now, Lord, I pray you would take it so we could focus on you together. Lord, that we could go to battle together. That we could climb together. That we could clothe ourselves with the righteous armor of God together, Lord. And that we could pack for this journey together. Lord, take everything that we're holding on to. Take it away. We don't want it. Just give us more of you. Holy Spirit, thank you for this. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the the direction of our lives this week. Encourage us in that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, thanks, Lola. I love you. I'm allowed to say that. She's, she's wonderful. Even when I don't think so. My bad. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, uh, if you haven't joined us for the Climb series, I want to go over the last three weeks with you since we started. The first week, I asked you to climb with me, right? Anybody remember that, those that were here? I asked you to climb with me. I didn't say it was going to be fun or easy, did I? No, in fact, it probably wasn't fun that week. But hey, I asked you to join me anyway. And all of you who were there that week are here this week, so I'm assuming you said yes. And if you didn't, maybe we'll work on that. Um, Week two, we came into church naked. You remember that? It was odd. It was awkward. No, I'm kidding. We were clothed, but we didn't have the righteous armor of God. So we climbed. We got ready for the climb. We put on our clothes for whatever climb it would be, whether it's a bicycle, whether it's a mountain, whether it's whatever's going on in your life, you clothed for that climb that week. And then week three, last week, we started packing. And and we, we thought we came in with everybody else's burdens And then we emptied our bag and realized we only needed our burdens when we start our journey. But I want to take it a step further this week. I'm going to read a scripture that I read last week, and I read it on Wednesday, and I'm going to read it again this morning. Um, And I think in, in order to understand my message title, you have to read this scripture. So let's jump into Luke 10 real quick. Verse 1. This is what it says out of the NLT. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. Now I want to stop there for a second. I didn't do this last week, but do you realize that he sent 72 ahead of him? He sent 72 to prepare the way. 72. Not one, not five, but 72 others. And they were in pairs. Watch. Verse 2. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals. And don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Okay, I read that last week, right? And I said, pack for yourselves. Don't pack 40 pounds of water so you can share it with everybody else. Pack enough for you. This week, I'm going to do it a little different. We're getting rid of the backpack. We're going to pack for a hike, but I'm getting rid of the backpack. Ben, how are you going to do that? Well, you'll see. 
The title of my message this way is sharing your surplus while carrying nothing. It's wordy, it's long, you don't do that as a minister, it's not what you're supposed to do, but sharing your surplus while carrying nothing. Welcome to Packing for the Climb Part 2. If you're new here, thanks for showing up. Get ready to pack your bag. I'm going to kick you out. Right? Here's, here's the opening statement I want to make, and I want you to hear this. We do not have room to share with others and also take on burdens if we bring with us all of our belongings. You don't have room in your life if you have all of your belongings with you at all times and your focus is on your belongings. You won't have room to share with others' burdens. You won't have room to, to share in others' trials. You won't have room to help somebody when they slip off the mountain to catch them because you're so busy with your house. You're so busy, do I dare say, with your kids. You're so busy with your stuff. You're so busy with your own burdens. You're so busy. See, when we carry our stuff with us, our stuff demands our time. And so I have to say that when Jesus sent the 72 out, he gave them one mission. Not themselves, but himself. Not themselves, but himself. He sent them out saying, no, don't take anything. One, you'll be worried it'll be stolen because I'm sending you to a place where wolves are among the sheep. They will take from you. It reminds me of a scripture where Jesus is talking to Judas and Judas is, is described here as a thief among the disciples. He's in charge of the money, but he's stealing it. That's crazy. See, last week I mentioned this verse to help us understand that when we pack, we are to pack for ourselves. This week I mentioned this verse to show us that if we take our stuff, we will not have room in our lives to share living water. Because if we're taking with us on our journey everything around us, we'll never have room to share the living water that we claim to have. This bound boundless water, this water that's supposed to spring up out of us. We'll have no room to help others with anything. We won't have the ability to lift them from the dirt to righteousness in Christ. Anybody want to help people get from the dirt to a place where they're seen as righteous before God? I mean, you got to leave your junk at home. You got to leave you got to leave, and excuse me, but you got to leave your crap outside. Outside of your relationships. Leave it there. If you need help, by all means, bring it here. But when you go out to minister, to share, when God is calling you, when the Holy Spirit says, hey, Connie, I want you to go to Kroger's, and I want you to go to the meat aisle, and I want you to share Jesus with this person. Guess what? Leave it in your car. Your burden. Because you're going to grab someone else's burden. It's called death. And you're going to share life. So what I'm saying today is that when we send you, don't take anything. Leave your backpack at home. Your backpack with your burdens, your extra clothing, your extra shield. Only carry the resource that God has given you. Isaiah 17 says this. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Ooh, that's good. Verse 8 then says, They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of, of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I have to think of a scripture in Matthew 25, it talks about the ten virgins. And there's five wise virgins and, and five really dumb virgins. But when we look at these virgins, I, I, as, as I was reading it this morning, I was just like, they're all kind of dumb. 
I'm, I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. Now, the story, the story, Jesus's original purpose for that message was not, hey, it, it was not, hey, these were dumb virgins. They were smart. They were very wise. The, the reality is, is that, that they're there. But when you get to it, five of them only had enough to make it so far, enough oil to make their lamps burn for so long, and the others had enough to go the whole night. And here's the, the interesting fact, and I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, Ben, this is where this verse and this set of scriptures matches up with what you're saying, because when the, the not so smart, the, the dumb virgins came knocking because we ran out of oil, those people didn't have the living oil to give them any extra oil. There's going to come a time in our life there's going to come a time in our life when people are going to be knocking at our door saying, I need Jesus. And Jesus is around the corner coming back. And we have living water. And so we have enough to share with them. And so we're not like the five wise virgins in having not enough to give to them. We have more than enough to give to them. And so we get to introduce them to what living water looks like. Are we prepared to do that? Are we prepared to give of our resources that God has provided us so that we can give no matter what the time constraint is? No matter what we think we're going to lack? We have been called, and we are called, to give our burdens and our possessions to God and to others. So we should not have a problem with having room to support or direct others to a well of life, let alone the river of life. Anybody want people to come in this church very shallow, no roots at all? I do. I want, I want these seats to be filled with people who have no roots. Because when they come in and have no roots, they're going to start digging into the river of life, into the bank of the river of life. And we, not me, we are going to teach them how to grow their roots deep into the river so that their roots hit the river of life and they continually produce fruit. Some of you might be sitting there going, I have dry seasons, Ben. I'm not by the river. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hey, life's hard. Get a helmet. If we are giving all our stuff to God, if all of our stuff is given to God, all, all of our life, throughout all our life, check this out, then we'll find the river right next to us. If you're going through a dry season, a very hot season, a season where it hasn't rained for days. That's not the river of life. You look next to you and boom, I've given up all my stuff, God. Here it is. See, I'm going to start telling you a story about a time I decided to go off the beaten path. I was uh, with a friend and we were in Colorado, in San Isabel, Colorado, by San Isabel Lake. And we decided to go to his parents' house and drop off our cars and then we were going to hike to a silver mine. And then we said, well, if we aren't tired by then, we'll go ahead and hike by this creek. How many of you have ever gone hiking by a creek before? Drank a couple? Yeah. Have you ever just gotten down and drank from that water? You know that could be harmful to you. Even in a mountain where not very many people go, it could be very harmful to you. Why? Because Animals like to urinate in the water, okay? Or poop. Excuse the crude word, but it's, that's what it is, right? And so if you drink from that with your hands, you could get a disease, okay? That's very unlike the river of life. So I want to share with you what this is. Now, I could carry six liters of water on my back and have about 40 pounds on my back, right? Maybe a little more than that for 40. Or I could carry this, which is a couple ounces, and that's 4,000 liters of water. In our life, this life straw, what they call it, is super light and it can go around my neck. I'm not going to do it because of the mic. But 
when we decide to use this, and I haven't used one of these ever, so I'm assuming this is how it works. Yeah, let's see what happens. Maybe I, maybe I get sick. But you literally, you get down. Oh, and this is Illinois River water. There's something plugging it. It has to be. I'm not getting anything. I've never used one of these in my life. That's not really Illinois River water. I'd be lying. Then you have to blow all the water out. I'll do that later. But if it was, this would kill 99, or take care of 99% of all the bacteria and parasites that were living in the water. So there's still a slight chance with that life straw that I catch something. But if I'm taking that on a hike with my friends up by a stream, I don't have to carry the entire backpack. I don't have to carry all my burdens. What's the word say? That his burdens are light. His burdens are light. And so when I'm getting ready to go out with friends to wherever, I'm called to carry his burdens, not mine. How many times do we leave our house carrying these heavy burdens and we're carrying them and we're going, God, I just don't know if I can do it today. Oh no. Something at work gets you down. Oh no, I'm going to be fired. I'm going to, uh-oh, I'm not going to do well. Oh no. I'm not going to meet with God today because my worries are bigger than his worries. Right? But God calls us to say, give those up. I don't want them. I don't want them. He wants them. He literally says, give me your burdens. I can take care of them. So what are we doing walking, hiking with the big backpack full of our burdens when we should be hiking going, hey, guess what? I can give those up to God. I'll do it for you. Let me support you. Drink from the river of life. 4,000 liters. I don't need that in one day. So let's take a couple people with me. Right? But here's the thing. My resource is smaller than God's resource. My resource is, in comparison, completely worthless. Zechariah, this is a prophetic word, and I think this goes along with the prophetic word. This, this sermon goes with the prophetic word that was shared this morning. But Zechariah 14.8 says this, On that day, life-giving waters will flow out from Jerusalem, half toward the Dead Sea, half toward the Mediterranean, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. When you say yes to Jesus, there is no more dry season. You will, if you're saying yes to Jesus and you're walking on His will, His path, His direction, you'll look to the right and to the left and realize you're walking in the river of life. You won't feel dry anymore because you're accessing the Spirit. See, when, when we hit this so-called dry season, what we fail to realize is that it's not someone else creating the dry season. It's me. Input you for me. Right? Right? You can't look to someone to find your wet season. You have to look to God to find your river of life. I'm going to get this name wrong. This guy is a French oceanographer, explorer, environmentalist, educator, and film producer. I don't think he's a Christian, but he said something pretty profound. Jean-Michael Cousteau. Cousteau? I have it back there somewhere. It says this. I want you to leave it up for a second. Clean water, the essence of life, and a birthright for everyone must become available to all people now. Clean water. Water in general. Here's, here's something. I want to I change the word clean. Living water, the essence of life, and a birthright for everyone must become available to all people now. If you don't know some, something exists, is it available to you? If you only know it exists but don't know what it's about, is it very available to you? 
It could be. In life, as we are going on this hike, we have to prepare to share. I didn't mean to rhyme there. I meant to rhyme later in my message, not now. But we have to be prepared to share what God is giving us, His resources for us, right? Right? We all would agree with that. Ben, you're right. You're 100% right. And then when it comes to God calling on us, we go a little into shy mode and go, but God, I'm not there. When we hike next to the life-giving waters, we will never not have enough. I just failed grammar. Never not. Never not have enough. Uh Uh-uh. You walk through life with the confidence of salvation. You will never not have enough. You will never not have enough resource to help somebody. You will never not have enough something to give them. You will never not have enough. If you're walking next to the river of life, you will never not have enough life to give. You will always have more. When we have helped ourselves to Christ, we should find out that we are walking next to or in the stream that produces life. And we can call others to drink from it and find life and teach them to place their roots into the bank of the river. Anybody here think your roots could grow deeper? And if anybody says no, I'm going to have words with you. Right? God has called us not just to be in the river, but to grow into the river, to mature into the river, to grab a hold of the solid ground under the river, the, the ground that never doesn't have enough because too much fruit is growing off of you now that it's starting to plant seeds beside you. When was the last time you saw something sprout up from something you've done for Jesus? Oh, now I hit a nerve. But Ben, I didn't have the right resource for that. It, and, and that's great. God shows mercy and grace and, and all of that through this. I have to go into another verse that talks about living water. Are we cool with that? I'm going to go to the most popular one, my favorite anyway. John 4, verse 13. It's talking to the Samaritan woman at the well. The one that has not just one husband, right? Jesus responds to her. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. Anybody thirsty right now? Physically. Yeah? I've been drinking a lot of water lately. Verse 14. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them giving them eternal life. If it's a fresh bubbling spring and you've said yes to Jesus, where's that fresh bubbling spring that can't stop bubbling? Oh, snap. You mean God wants my whole life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does. We were never meant to be their savior. We just need to direct them to their savior so that they can have the fresh bubbling spring. We, that should be the first thing off our lips when we see someone, Jesus is so good! And that's Christianese, Ben. We don't do that. Okay, find a new way. Check it out. Someone called me the other day, a couple weeks ago, and said, hey, we have a need. Some of you know her. I'm not going to say her name, but she had a need. Her printer wasn't working. So someone calls me from the church and said, hey, Ben, I don't know, but maybe you can help us get this printer set up. You're young. I don't even know if he knew about my degree, my associate's degree. But I said, okay, I'll come. I'll see what I can do. A couple days later, we got her up and working. It wasn't about me gaining anything. When she offered to pay me, I said, no. It's not about me. It's about building kingdom life. It's about encouraging one another, saying this can't be an expense on you. You have enough to worry about. Let me lighten a burden a little bit. Let me produce living water. I don't have to go and God bless you. I don't. 
I can literally live that. I'm living next to or in the river of life. All I have to do is splash them with a little light. When we come into our lives, when we walk through our lives, sometimes in, in our lives we say, but I'm not right with that. The person that called me, he knew he wasn't right for that. Could he have been? Maybe with a little research, might have taken a little longer. But he used his resources to find the answer. And it took me a couple days. Not a professional, okay? We tend to get wrapped up in, in titling what we're doing. Knock it off. Don't title everything we do. Rather, just do what Christ has called you to do. Don't, you don't have to go, well, this is what I'm doing. Let me, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm evangelizing. Good for you. I don't care what you call it. I'm building relations. Good for you. That's awesome. I'm carrying burdens. Good for you. No one cares. We just care that we're doing it, right? I'm super excited that you're doing those things. Those are great things. But go do them and do them with, with the Lord. When we tend to name things, we tend to start bragging about those things. And that's not okay. And so when we come in to, to what we do, just do it. Don't worry about the name of it. Don't worry about what you're going to do by title. Worry about where God's going to take you next. In fact, don't worry, just go. See, when it came to that helping that lady, I used what God placed in me. Yeah, I went to school for computers. Yeah, I didn't learn a lot. Yeah, I wasn't very bright. Yeah, I hated it. But I learned something. And I have the ability to learn it and continue working on it and continue getting there and finding the issue, even if it takes a couple days, and fixing the problem and li leaving knowing that she was blessed. Next. Next. I, I think what I said to the individual who called me is, I might be able to help you. I wasn't very confident. But God doesn't require us to have confidence to help. He requires obedience. A lot of times we go into situations, we feel like God's calling us, and we say, but I don't have it. I don't have enough. I need more. I just have a little. I just have my resource. Maybe you haven't shared your resource this week. Okay, That's okay. God, God has grace. He loves you. He's going to forgive you. He's going to say, it's okay. I forgive you. Romans says where there's more sin, where there's more disobedience, there's more forgiveness. Right? So I want to pray for you in a second. I want to pray that you have a second chance this week. Some of us think our resources are not worth sharing. Or some of us are overlooking our resource completely. In either case, we need to know that our resource is enough because God is our source. His source is limitless. A lot of times we think that we need more resource in order for us to pour out. However, God wants us to start pouring the little we have so he can multiply it. Now hold on. I told you earlier I didn't mean to rhyme and now I'm going to rhyme. It's going to be a cheesy statement. We got to pour for more. I know he's sitting over here. I called it. I got that one. Yeah, you said pour. I knew more was coming. It's all right. You got to pour for more. You want more in your life? Check the last time you poured. Oh, snap. You want to, to have the good feelings of God living and bubbling out of you and springing out? Pour. 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 
if I had another water bottle, I'd pour. You might not like it if I pour on the ground. It'll seep through and then hit Roland in the head. Actually, that wouldn't be funny. No, I'm just kidding. We have to pour for more. When you pour, do you look at what you're pouring into or do you look over your shoulder? I had a thought this morning as I was looking at this that when I pour, I'm looking at what I'm pouring into. So I see that I'm not going to overflow it. Sometimes people don't need to be overflowed because then that becomes too much. Okay, When you're pouring into someone, you pour in to the right amount. But if you're looking over your shoulder at what I used to like, at what I used to do, at what I used to be, at what the good times were, I can't look forward ahead. When you're hiking and climbing along a cliff and you look over your shoulder to see where all your friends are, you're going to step off the cliff. So we can't continually look back at what we once had. We have to look at what's ahead of us because the source is before us. He has gone and made the way. So why am I looking behind me where he already led the way, where I've already gone over and I'm going forward? I got to see my source. I need to access my source. The person in front of you, God has a source for you to be there for them. Not me. I'm saying like if you were having coffee or eating Burger King with them, whatever. I mean, tomato, tomato, right? Um, but if you feel like you don't have enough, you have enough. Here's why a little amount you think you have is more than enough. Someone wants to go get Lola real quick. It's because God is our source. He's, he is our limitless source. He never runs out. He heals the broken. He clothes the naked. He makes the blind to see. He makes the lame to walk the deaf to hear, the mute to sing. I could just start rhyming, you know, just... No, no one likes hip-hop here, right? It's just me. He doesn't stop because you get in his way. He's like a bulldozer of love. And he comes in and he will flatten anything that gets in his way so that that person can walk again. He will flatten you if you're in his way so that they can see his love again. They will go and he will go and he will get out of your way to get in your way for his love to show up in your life. See, if you missed it yesterday, you can pour today. If you missed it today, you can pour tomorrow. See, your resource never stopped. But Ben, I missed it. That's great. You can pour on Monday. You can pour on Tuesday. And when you start pouring on Monday, and you then pour on Tuesday, and then you pour on Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, September, October, November, December, January, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Because when you start pouring, you pour for 60, I'm trying to think, 64 days, 63 days, 64, 63 days, you create a new habit. I watched this video with Stephen Furtick interviewing this uh, neuroscientist brain person. I'm not that smart, so. And she's like, brains require 63 days to build a new habit. So if you start pouring out, make sure you find someone to pour out to tomorrow. Make sure you find someone to pour out the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. You're going to feel drained, but the, have you accessed God? Have you looked to the, when you're looking behind you, you're not visioning, you're not envisioning the river of life next to you or in, around you. You're looking behind you. And when you look behind, you go off course and God follows you with this little creek behind you. He's building it because he's got more for you. He's not done with you yet. You don't have enough life in you yet. You have living water, but when it stops bubbling, you've missed it. 
You've misplaced the river. And God follows you with this creek and he's tapping you on the shoulder. It's like that Disney movie, Moana. And the water comes up and taps you because it's alive and living and breathing. And it's tapping you saying, are you annoyed yet? I've been tapping you for three months. Come back. See, you want to pour more? You want to see the Spirit work more? You want to bubble up inside of you and have a passion that says, uh-uh, you can't stop me. What you doing? Walking away from the river of life unintentionally. It's God's grace that sends that creek with that water tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, I got you. I love you. I'm going to wrap you up. This is the river of life. It never goes cold. It's a warm wrapping. In the middle of winter, you can jump in and not freeze to death. In the middle of summer, you don't have to worry about going without water. You can become hydrated. See, this water is your more. This water is your more. This water, no matter the amount you carry, this is enough. But in God's eyes, I've got more. Let me repeat something. The little amount you think you have is more than you think you have. Because God is enough. He heals the blind, makes them to see. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to sing. He calls on you and says, your problems aren't big enough for me to take care of. They're too small. So I got you. No matter what burden you're carrying today, it's not big enough for God. He doesn't anymore. He takes even the smallest of small burdens and he says, give it to me. If it's holding you back in any way, give it to me. I'm about ready to pray for you. Some of y'all had this, this notion that I'm supposed to fill my resource into them, put it in them. And I don't have the capability. And God's sitting here talking to you right now and said, you had the capability and you have it even more today. Sometimes we just need that confidence of salvation to re-utter its mouth and put on our head as a helmet. And we just need to realize that that salvation doesn't stop us. It empowers us. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for more so I can pour more. I'm thirsty. This isn't good enough for me. This isn't good enough. It's not enough. If the Hans have a big bill from water, you're welcome. I only have like six. Sorry, Mom. sorry, sorry, Daddy. Sorry, Mom. I'll pay you back. The reality is, is that God wants to pour more into you. But if we're not pouring, we don't have room to have him pour more. Oh, we're over. We, we used to say the saying in the 90s, overflow me, God. Let me pour out. Let me sprout out. Let me do this. If I'm not pouring out, he doesn't want to pour more in. He knows what I can handle and what I can't. And he gives me what I can. It's not the easy road all the time, but I've got it. Not under my own power, his. So I want to pray real quick. If, if, I'll tell you what. You have a burden in your life and you want to give it up to God. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Go right over here. Write it down. Throw it away in the junk trunk and get rid of it at the foot of the cross saying, God, it's yours. I don't want it anymore. It's my burden and I'm giving it up. I don't want it anymore. I don't own it anymore. When you leave this place, don't say, my issues because now they're God's issues. When you go from here, when you throw it away, they're no longer yours. And if you want prayer, I'll stay up here. I'll go to, I'll, you drag me where you want to drag me. Other pastor in the room, other pastors in the room, you're more than welcome to pray with people. I don't care. You're part of my family. Hey, look to the right and left of me. see a resource of God's next to you, in front of you, behind you. Dig into me. What's more powerful than a church that prays together for each other? Nothing.
because we're accessing the Spirit of God, our resource for the kingdom. Ain't nothing going to break that wall down. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Woo! You! You won the football game. You won the battle. You won. You won the basketball game. You, Lord, you just won. You conquered it all. I wear that salvation. Ain't nothing going to come in between me and you. And nothing's going to come in between my acquaintances and you. I ask that you send more. More to fight the fight. More to harvest. Lord, that you, you enlarge our vision, our mission, our field. Lord, that you would go before us, that we would have a confidence that you have conquered before we go. And Lord, that our own, our own thoughts, Lord, I pray we captive them, that we put them in prison and we don't let our thoughts block us from pouring. Lord, for those that missed their call yesterday, Lord, I pray you give them that second chance today. That third, fourth, or fifth chance. Lord, I pray that you continue giving us the chance to minister. The chance to give more. Lord, that we would never see our resources too little or not enough, but we would see it as exactly what you have for the purpose today. Lord, you are our resource. It's never ending. Give us that mindset this morning. Strengthen us as we leave here. Encourage us. Help us stand, not on our own, but on your will. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I want to give you everything. Everything. Jesus, amen. Hey, thanks for coming. We're going to end with a worship song. If you want prayer, I'll stay up here. If you want to give something up, there's the junk trunk. If you want to confess something, but you haven't confessed it in a while, confess it today. In fact, grab somebody you love and share it with them. In fact, grab it with someone you think is going to judge you. Because when you share it, you brought it up and it'll release. When you bring things up to the light, the darkness disappears. So sometimes we have to physically bring things to the light for darkness to disappear. So if that's you this morning, just give it up. Give it up. Love you guys.